everybody, welcome back to the Let's Code series. It's Mac here, uh, and today we are going to be finally dealing with Favicons. So, I did think we'd, uh, we'd try brackets again. I liked using it last time. I don't think we should use the same text editor. Well, I was going to say we should use a different text editor in every video, but that would get ridiculous. But actually, before we can do any of that, um, we're going to have a little bit of change of scenery because we need to do some photo editing. So get a tool that basically can resize photos and that's about it so Photoshop can do it GIMP can do it affinity you could probably find just a website online that'll do the same thing but I've got Photoshop here so that's what we're gonna use and the next thing that we're gonna need is an image that we can use as a favicon so this is what I've got this is a 500 by 500 pixel logo basically and I've named it favicon.png so let's go ahead and drop this into Photoshop here okay so in, in order to get all of our favicons to work right we're gonna need to make about six different versions of our favicon image the first of which is actually just going to be this png i just want a relatively high res image that websites can pull from to use for all of their various purposes it, with mobile and different browsers and even like windows 8 tiles have special favicons that they use it's just people use these images that represent sites for more than just a little 14 pixel deal up in the menu bar they use it to uh, represent items on a home screen if you add a website to a home screen on mobile or on desktop sometimes or for adding websites to favorites it's, it's just there there are a lot of different utilizations for these images and so it makes sense to have a couple of images at varying resolutions that different sites can pull from so what we're gonna go ahead and do with this image is I'm gonna come up to image and then image size and I want to resize it down to about 144 by 144. And what we're gonna be creating now are Apple touch icons, uh, not necessarily favicons. We'll come back and make an, an ICO file for the favicon in a second. But b basically the idea is that if you're on an iOS device, an iPad, an iPhone, watch or whatever, iOS will use these images to represent your website. And, and, and it's not just Apple devices that do it. There's a lot of other websites that use the Apple touch icon format to pull images that they want. Anyways, next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add a background so that we don't have any transparency here. I just want like a black background maybe. And let's see, this may seem odd to anyone who's watched my channel for a while because I've always done motion graphics and graphic design and stuff, but I'm actually not a huge fan of Photoshop. I do a lot of uh, photo editing and After Effects, the, their Adobe's uh, kind of premier video tool. I mean, it's okay, I'm fine with it, but. It's just not my favorite tool to use. It seems a little, I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do file, save as. And for the moment, I'm just putting all these images on our desktop. I'm going to change the format to PNG. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it Apple Touch Icon. And you don't have to name all of these files the way that I am. I think it makes sense to do it this way um, because we're gonna have a default Apple Touch icon, one for the default iPhone home screen, and then one for the iPad and one for the iPhone. So it makes sense to name them in a way that you can keep them organized. So this is the default Apple Touch icon. I'm gonna hit save. And then generally you're not gonna wanna do any kind of compression on PNG. So make sure you have largest file selected. And then we have another nice little icon over here. Now the next thing that we wanna export is an iPad icon. So it's gonna be the same situation. We want a PNG and we're gonna name this one uh, iOS iPad and then we'll add the resolution here. So 144 by 144. Go ahead and hit save on that. Again, no compression there. Very nice. Now the next thing we wanna do, come up here to image. We're gonna resize our canvas again here or the actual image, not the canvas, sorry. Um, and we're gonna change this to 114 by 114. Hit save. Got a little bit of a smaller image now. We can do file, save as, our PNG again. I don't know why it's defaulting to PDF all the time. That's a bit odd. And then we're gonna do iOS, iPhone, 114 by 114. Save that one, no compression. And then finally here at the end, we're gonna do image, image size, and we're gonna resize one more final image. And this one's gonna be 57 by 57. Very tiny. And when we export this one, do, 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 save as. We're gonna call this iOS 
default home screen 57 by 57 and make sure we're doing PNG. Uh, you can't use JPEGs, even though we're specifically designing these to not have transparency. It's PNG or icon formats are really all you can use up here. Okay, so now we have five of the six icons we need. The final thing that I wanna do is I wanna resize this original PNG and save it as an icon format, which can be done in Photoshop, but you have to install a plugin to do it and it's it's odd, it's an odd situation. So the easiest way that I've found to create an icon format really quickly is if we just come to Google and Google like PNG to ICO uh, resize, we can find probably a couple of websites that will do the job for us. And yeah, there we go. So let's see, let's come to our desktop here, select that PNG that we wanna resize. And there are a couple of different sizes that you can use for the favicons. A lot of people will make a one one ICO file with three different sizes in it, um, like 16 and then 32 and 48. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the biggest size that we can, or that you know makes sense, which is 48 by 48. So I'm gonna change the size here and I'll link this specific website down here below because this one, I think I, I checked it out before and it does resizing and conversion, which not all of them do. So anyways, go ahead and click uh, start conversion and it should automatically download here. We might have to click a button. Oh no, it did. Okay, so then we have the new file downloaded, favicon.ico. If we take a look, it is of course very, very tiny, 48 pixels by 48 pixels, and it is ready to go. So then all we're gonna wanna do is grab all of these images and copy them over to a handy spot in our uh, website directory. So in this case, I've got my project inside of the, woo, inside of the project folder, I've just got an extra folder called images. Inside of that, favicons, this is where they'll all live. Very nice. Okay, so I think we're ready to uh, go ahead and get started here. Before I do that, there's one more thing I wanna do, and that is I'm gonna make a copy of our website URL up here, and I wanna open up as many browsers as I can because favicons, to me at least, feel like one of those things that we wanna test in as many different environments as we can. So I'm gonna refresh the page here. It looks like for some reason Google Chrome has uh, the favicon cached from when I did it last night, but whatever. Firefox doesn't have it. Presumably none of the other browsers will have cached that uh, information. That's weird, I didn't know that um, browsers would do would uh, do stuff like that. We could probably just clear out the cache, but wow, Opera did it too. That's so weird. Okay, um, final contestant is Tor here. And again, these are just the, um, the five browsers that I test in. If you're on a PC, it makes a lot of sense to get Internet Explorer and Edge um, because those are fairly well used browsers. So let's go ahead and make this happen. Uh, we do not actually need our CSS document open today. It's gonna be all in HTML, so that's cool. We're gonna have, we've got six images, so we're gonna have six lines of code. And they're all going to be a link to uh, a file and then a little bit of extra information telling it what to use. So let's just go ahead and we'll do one at a time. So let's do href, link, href, and we're gonna link into our CSS folder. It's not into our CSS folder. We're gonna do images, favicons, and then the first one that we'll link will be our favicon ICO file. You can see why I picked brackets now. It does that uh, searching within the um, folders, which is very, very handy. I noticed last night that Adam wasn't doing that and I was like, we're gonna record the video in brackets. Anyways, uh, the next thing that we wanna do is, I'm gonna do a relationship tab. It's an icon, and then over here we're gonna do type, and we just have to tell if it's an image and it's an icon. So image dash dash x dot ico. I think maybe we can just do image slash ico. Um, the majority of browsers will actually work with just this one little bit, this first code. So we can actually go ahead and test it in, let's see, what wasn't popping up? Firefox, and we'll see. Yeah, now we have a favicon Firefox. Probably the same thing in Tor. Yeah, cool. So now we have favicons in all the browsers. 
except for Safari, which we'll get into in a second. But what we want to make sure that we're doing is getting our website relatively mobile ready. We'll have a whole video about converting our website to be to work really well on mobile. But one of the first things we can do right off the bat is make sure that whatever operating system we're on, mobile or desktop, is going to have access to whatever images they want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, link and then href uh, slash images slash favicon and I'm going to link to that big 500 pixel favicon so that one's just called favicon.png and we'll do relationship icon type and then image slash png close out of that and now we're ready to start working with our apple touch icons so we're going to do link href we're going to link to we'll do the I guess the default one first so it'll be uh, favicons and then just apple touch icon png and then what we need to do is we need to do relationship and we're going to call this an apple touch icon go ahead and close out of that so that's the first of our four and then we'll do link href is equal to images favicons and next up we'll grab it doesn't matter what order you do them in just remember to get everything right <laughs> that doesn't make a lot of sense but um anyway so like if we're picking let's see what do we have here we'll pick the the 144 by 144 the i the ipad image the reason that it's important to do them in the right order is because with everything other than the default apple touch icon link what you have to do is add a little attribute called sizes and then specify what size this is so if we're using the 144 by 144 image, we have to tell it, hey, 144 by 144. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll do relationship, Apple, touch, icon, pre-composed. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that so I don't have to type it out again. Okay, so next up, we'll do the link, uh, href, images, slash favicon, woo, slash favicons, broke it again. And then we'll grab our 114 by 114 image, specify the sizes 114 by 114. They're going to do relationship and paste in that last bit Apple Touch icon pre composed. And then we have one last one to deal with here, and that's going to be our smallest one, our default 57 by 57 image. So then we'll do sizes 57 by 57. Actually, we maybe don't um, need it on this one, we'll see. And after that, we'll do relationship, paste that last little bit in there, and we are all set. So, all of our browsers are working. Tor is going good, Opera is going good. Of course, it was cached beforehand, so it'll work either way. Same thing with Firefox. Chrome also cached it, but again, it's there. But then we hop over to Safari, and by default, Safari doesn't even want to show favicon, so we'll have to open up, like, another tab. Um, let's do, like... We should open up this Vim site. So generally a favicon would be displayed here. You can see it here on the Vim website, or if we go to like newyorktimes.com, uh, they'll have a favicon pop up here. But for whatever reason, our site, even though we just added six separate images to use, some of them specifically developed by Apple, Apple is not going to pull any of those. And I don't know how this works, but based on this icon here, I like had this weird hunch that maybe, just maybe, Safari wouldn't pull, pull uh, favicon images off of a website that's on your hard drive off of an HTML file that it had to be using a website that was hosted, uh, which I know sounds stupid. I don't even know how that works or how it happened, but I had a little bit of a hunch and I had a spare domain name. So I uploaded the website to um, an S3 bucket last night and set up the hosting. And then what do you know? This is hosted on an actual server. It's identical to what we have here, exactly the same code. I just put it in an S3 bucket and linked it to a domain name. And now we have a favicon image here. I don't know what exactly is going on. It's not using any of the Apple touch icons or anything. It's just using a standard favicon image. It's not gonna show up if you're previewing, but when you actually publish the website, it should work flawlessly. But since I had already hosted a website, I went ahead and opened it up on my phone. Uh, you can see it's not looking great. Like this website is not to totally mobile ready. It actually looks better than I thought it would though. There's not anything that's just immediate. It's just scaling down, I think, because we haven't done any viewport stuff or anything like that. But anyways, what I want to do is try out the Apple touch icon. Since we have a live site, let's go ahead and give it a try. If I go ahead and hit share here and we'll come over here to, let's see, add to home screen and then we'll hit add. And what do you know? There's our nice little Apple Touch icon working perfectly. So that means we're all set, I guess. So thank you, everybody, for watching. I will see you in the next video.